we're here with uh, Bear and Harold. Um, Harold's a pretty, pretty standard name. Bear, what's? Why do they call you Bear? Uh, seventh grade wrestling. Uh, they said I looked like a bear out there with the rest of the kids, so it stuck. Ever since then. All right, all right. You're a pretty big guy. Yeah. Now, you really used to kick my ass, so I never, <laughs> never got the nickname because I lost a lot. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pretty terrible at wrestling too, actually. Um, all right. So your your mine is called Lazy Bear Mine. Yeah. Yep. And how long have you guys been up here? We've been in the central area mining. I would say four years now. Yeah. Four yeah. Years. Four years. All right. And you, this is your full time job. No, no, I have a full-time job at the university, and Harold had a full-time job. He retired. Okay. And, uh, no, this is just a hobby that turned out to be a lot more work than we expected. So. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that's that's how it typically goes with gold. What was your first, like, experience? Like, I assume you didn't have a backhoe at a wash plant for your first, like, did you go panning gold somewhere? Did you, like, metal detect? How did you get interested in it? Yeah, so it all started a long time ago for me. My uncle Basil Bolstridge uh, was a gold miner. He lived on the Kenai Peninsula. And uh, my parents would go down there visiting. We'd go down with him. And then he he would always, he'd show me how to gold pan in his kitchen sink, which now I know wasn't a good idea, but he did it anyway. <laughs> was he a plumber by chance? No, no, he was a gold miner and a trapper. He was larger than life, this dude. But... Uh, so that planted the seed, and then it stayed dormant for years and years and years. And Harold, my when I married my wife, Harold, you know, he had always said he wanted, he missed out on a chance to own a mine way back when he had five, six kids running around the house. He couldn't afford it. Sure. So, um, yeah, I started panning and playing around at the Pedro's Monument outside of Fairbanks. Okay. Then it went into where I would go and get gravels from wherever somebody would let me and I'd bring them home and process them. We had something set up at home and I met Daryl and Leva and they had a mine up here and before I knew it, they said, hey, do you guys want to claim? We're gonna, we're gonna go stake a whole bunch more property. If you guys want, you can stake one for yourselves here on this creek. And we said, yeah, I went and talked to Harold and he's like, absolutely. So we about killed ourselves doing the staking. But we got it done, and we went from one to now we have nine. Yeah. Nine did claims. you ride out on four wheelers to stake your claim? That and walk in, yeah. 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 So you did all four posts. Yeah. We hired years. little skinny guys to do the real tough stuff, <laughs> but we did the stuff close to the trail or the road. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so that first year, you were just like getting in your getting your road put in and stuff like that yeah we had some homemade stuff that we were using and then the following year we went in and bought a gold dredge or yeah we bought a three inch gold dredge Su yeah suction dredge. suction dredge so we did that first summer and absolutely loved it we had a great time doing that uh, down I by saw the mouth a, i saw a video of you guys you guys had like a metal rod attached to the nozzle right because yeah. the creek here um as you guys have seen the creek here is really shallow so yeah, you were able to just kind of like hang out and, and yeah, we run. would sit in lawn chairs and suction dredge. That's I how made we a handle. It. it was a handle it hooked to the hose and the nozzle, and then it had cross pieces on it, so you could stand there and you could move the nozzle wherever you wanted, up and down, do whatever you wanted yeah. with it. You didn't have to get in the water. What did you do when you got rocks stuck on the nozzle that couldn't go through? We had to reach down in there and pull them out. Oh, that's yeah. brutal! You had to reach down from the lawn chair. Yeah, <laughs> that is <laughs> that was super sucked. tough. <laughs> Well, we had our nephew, Ethan. That was his job for a while. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. stuck! And then he'd go down and get it. Okay. <laughs> he thought it was fun for about a, about a week, and then yeah. he figured it out. And, <laughs> right. Well, this isn't fun. Right. You guys weren't taking turns. Like, you would go get the rocks. No, that was his job. Okay. All we right. weren't leaving the chair. All right. <laughs> All right. Sweet. And you got, like, an old camper up here, I saw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but kind of fast forward, four years later, you guys are obviously, like, you know, kind of coming into a different phase of the mining than you were with the three-inch dredge. Can you can you just show us what you're doing over here? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, it's a lot of trial and error is what's uh, happening. Okay. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Well, I guess as long as error. it's more trial than error. More, more error than error. Yeah. So this year we were able to come down here, and this was all forested at the time. 
and uh, we made some deals and we got the use of Daryl's uh, excavator and we came down and cleared the trees off and then he let us use his dozer and we moved the overburden off what we needed to move and uh, and then we dug up some pay dirt and we're just going to work our way through it and basically we're going to work all this and then we'll decide what's next what that next evolution is if we don't get any more than we did down at the mouth then we'll just basically we'll just keep playing and having a hobby and enjoying it but if it actually starts producing, this area normally produces about an ounce per hundred yards. Okay. So if we get anywhere close to that, we'll be really happy, and then we'll start getting more stuff. So, right, right. But Harold and I have always, we're doing it out of pocket. We're not going into debt. So sure. as we build up funds and we can buy something to do, that's kind of how we roll it. So what I really like about kind of all your stuff is that, you know, out at the, the road, you've got your first little wooden thing wash plant that you built right and and that's super cool and even this like you've, you've got this is a, a a little wash plant trommel right mm -hmm. and and i love that like it's still got some of the, like the homemade feeling to it you know what i mean it's yeah you see the black rack that everything's sitting on yeah that was from kmart when kmart was in fairbanks <laughs> and that's where they kept all their balls for the kids that was the, uh, that had a uh, sh uh, skin that went around the outside of it with all kinds oh, of pictures. where you would like pull the yeah. big inflatable ball out yeah. and dribble it around in the yeah. store. Yeah. And, <laughs> and your mom would be like, don't dribble the ball in the store. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so you guys are feeding the top hopper uh -huh. with the backhoe. Yeah. Okay. And then you're running the, the heavies. Do, is there a punch plate up there? Or? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a screen, screen up there. Okay. So we found that the woven rolled streams work a lot better you can than the punch plates. You can stand on the yeah, that those work a lot better. The punch plates just really get clogged up. Okay, so oh yeah, that's that woven that woven metal. Yep. So we dump, all right. dump all the big rocks and everything. That white tube has got holes in it to spray the water out. It's got two vibrators on it to help material move. The white water washes all the rocks the little ones one inch or smaller go through the screen all the big ones go out the end okay yeah. and we're excited this time because in the past we've been screening our material i always hated it because you know gold is going off the screen with oh like where rock. you have this slanted yep yeah. on top of the hopper it's got the big metal rails yeah we had it all by itself so we would do it there and then we'd use a bobcat to load it into the the old wash plant and we both said it's you know we're missing a lot because there's a lot of fines that fall down there too right so this way we're washing everything right. every single rock goes through the washer and, and we're getting everything off of it okay and so you're digging from there it looks like you do have some big tailings down here and are they over there too like are you pulling the the tailings kind of over while you're operating yeah yeah okay we have another backhoe that's hopefully will be here next week that we actually took the backhoe off we're just going to use it as a little front loader. So its job, that will be Harold's job, is he'll be hauling away these tailings. And then we're punching a hole through here for a reason. We want him to be able to come in from that direction and grab these Scooping, big tailings yeah. here and back out. Sure. And then he'll feed me pay dirt as we'll just stay here and keep pushing stuff that way. So what do you, what like your most memorable moment, like we've got another friend, Johnny, that we've, we've talked to and, you know, you know he has all sorts of interesting slash crazy stories out on the 40 mile what what do you what is like the the most kind of like ridiculous thing you've had happen what here? i like here is and get entertained by is every we have a lot of miners stop by and see us you know and they'll visit and one guy flies over every day and tips his wing and waves at us old stan but every single one of them have come to what we were doing, working with, and said that it was wrong and we need to switch it. <laughs> so, I mean, we've had one time, we had three miners in the same day come and each one of them told us to do something different. So, it's just like, so what are we supposed to do? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's so much people just, you know, there's a million different ways to skin a cat, Absolutely, right? Yeah. And, and people are trying to figure out the best way and the most efficient way. We see the trommels a lot. I think that, you know, it's a super cool way of, of you know, washing the golds off the gravels and and uh, 
hopefully it's efficient for you guys. It's just powered by a little Honda motor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's awesome. We, uh, I think that's all, you know, we kind of wanted to just check in with you guys and see what you guys were up to here. Um, well, and... we wish you would have found more. That would have made us all happier. Yeah. yeah. The way we have it set up here, though, we can maximize the trommel, not just try to put it in the little hopper on the trommel. We can feed it much faster because the screen screens out all the big stuff and yeah. just the one-inch stuff go through and we process more material. Yeah, and your tailings are clean. I mean, there's not... It's definitely, you know, everything... What is this, 3 8 pump? Yeah. Yeah, so everything smaller is definitely going through, it looks like, which is great. Yeah, I really like it. So far, it's been doing great. Well, no, Sunday. I'll have to send you guys a video or some photos on what uh, it'll be. Uh, I'll either have a beer in my hand to press or, well, I guess I might have a beer in my hand but celebrating. Either way, <laughs> either way, I'll have a beer in right. my hand and uh, with a smile yeah, or a frown. So. I, and, you know, Brennan lives in Fairbanks. Like, if you... I mean, I don't know where you live versus where he lives and stuff like that. I so. think we're pretty close. I live right off of... Yeah. yeah, so maybe maybe he can come over and and see your cleanup. Yeah, you know. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks guys, and uh, be sure to check us out, and we'll keep uh, meeting interesting miners out here. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right.